Ever since dual motor electric scooters first came out, a lot of folks have been looking for a sub $1,500 scooter that will go 40 miles an hour or faster. People ask us for recommendations like this all the time. But if we look at the top speeds of the 124 scooters ESG has tested, nothing goes that fast for that little. And if there is something out there that does, it probably doesn't come with a warranty. But this week, we tested the first scooter that does a legit 40 miles per hour for less than $1,500, and it comes with a two-year warranty. This is the Solar P1 2.0. been hearing about this scooter for a while now, but just haven't been able to get our hands on one because Solar is a British brand that up until recently hasn't been sold in the US. But now the British scooters are coming. The red capes are coming. The red capes are coming. Hmm. So let's check out how the Solar P1 2.0 rides and performs. After a week of testing, my impressions of this scooter have been very positive. The base model starts at $1,300, but ours has a couple options you can see here. We've got the Tron Lite option, which is pretty cool, and we've got a separate option, the fingerprint start display. This display is designed by Solar, and I definitely want it, not because of the fingerprint reader, but because of something else that comes with it, and I'll explain more about that later. The basic specs are 2,400 watts of nominal power from dual motors, a claimed range of 30 miles, which you'll see later we got surprisingly close to in the real world, and a claimed top speed of 40 miles per hour, which according to the speedometer, we exceeded, but we'll give you the real tested number on that in a minute. I wasn't expecting, you know, the highest quality build or a ton of features at this price. At first glance, the build looks kind of old school and maybe like something you've seen before with the telescoping stem and, you know, folding bars, but digging a little deeper reveals the performance is very good, and the specs include some surprisingly modern stuff. The look of the scooter is kinda raw with a lot of exposed bolts, but it's also got a lot of nice little touches too, like the gold anodized bits that go with the gold on the dash and continue to the headlights, the stem latch, and all the way down to the chunky gold anodized valve stem caps. For a base price of $1,300, you know, what should it do well? Well, for this price, you're not expecting the very latest stem latch or hydraulic steering damper like its big brother, the Solar FF. Light. Maybe the biggest thing it's missing compared with the FF Lite are hydraulic brakes. But let's get into the things it does well, starting with the lights. When you turn on the headlight, you've got a choice of low beam, flashing, or high beam out front. The same light switch also turns on the mesmerizing glow from the optional Tron lights on the deck. Ours is in cyan, but you can also get it in red, green, or purple. The reason it's so evenly lit is it's not LED. This is a custom electroluminescent technology made in the UK. You get a single color, so you have to pick which color you want when you order the the scooter. And I don't mind that because even when I have a hundred colors to choose from on other scooters, I tend to just pick my favorite color and leave it. So just make sure you pick a color you love. Out back is a bright tail light and brake light and turn signals too, but you can only see them from the back, which is you know, kind of a bummer. But hey, kudos for having them at all at this price. The deck is extra wide at the front and back, which is nice for steering with your feet and typical in length at 19.8 inches. But it feels way, way longer than that because the footrest is huge and even though it looks like you're stepping on nothing, it's one of the best footrests ever because it's so flat. The fenders are huge too, so they'll do a good job of keeping the rider splash free if you get caught in the rain. And the scooter has a water protection rating of IP54, but we'd still recommend staying out of deep puddles and downpours since water damage typically isn't covered by scooter warranties. Okay, let's go up and look at the cockpit. Like I said, we're not expecting backlit buttons or a color display at this price, but I don't feel like I'm really missing anything either. Everything I'm used to seeing on higher end scooters is here in some form. Lights, turn signals, horn, old school eco turbo button, and single dual motor button. Though for some reason, the orange eco turbo button doesn't have a label on it. Then you've got this gorgeous high contrast display. I love that it sits so close to the brake levers so it's more comfortable to use on long rides. The fingerprint start display is a $100 option, but totally worth it. And not because it looks cool or because it's easy to read in bright sunlight, and not even because you can unlock it with any of your 10 fingers. The reason to get this option is that you get a much 
smoother throttle response because it comes with sine wave controllers. Sine wave is also more efficient, so you get maybe 5% more range than you would with conventional motor controllers. I don't usually do this, but let me take you through a couple of key P settings that you can tweak to get more performance. P6 is launch control level. For maximum performance, set launch control to five. It's not launch control in a car where you just get it once. This controls how hard the power comes on whenever you launch from a stop, and it can do it all day. Then P8 is for your regen brakes. It sets the intensity of your regen from zero to five, but it basically feels like it's off when it's set to two or lower. So I prefer it at three, but even if you crank it up to five, it's not too grabby. There's also a USB port here, but only the base model version will charge your phone. So that's one function you lose when you add the fingerprint start option. Oddly, you still get a key switch with fingerprint start, so you have two kinds of security here. Something else you get two of? Voltmeters, a red one here on the key switch and another on the display. One thing that's good to know about, some scooters are designed to turn on when they're charging and some aren't. So when you're charging your P1 2.0, don't freak out if you turn on the key to check your charging status and nothing happens. So you'll have to unplug it if you wanna check the voltage or turn the scooter on. Ride quality was better than I expected and that's due to another feature you don't expect at this price point. The P1 2.0 has hydraulic shocks, four in the front and one in the back. If I'm gonna nitpick, the front is a little stiff for my taste, but I'm only 165 pounds, so they'll work better as you get closer to the 330 pound rider weight limit. This next feature is a big one for me and for anybody who hates flat tires, and you know, who doesn't? It has two-less 10-inch tires, a feature that up until very recently was super rare for dual motor electric scooters. Two-less tires are more puncture resistant, especially when it comes to getting pinch flats when you hit a sharp edge. They have a small range advantage too because they have slightly less rolling resistance than tubed tires and they work better with tire sealant. The hybrid off-road tires are super wide and there are things I like and don't like about the shape. The wide footprint makes them absolutely rock when it comes to rough stuff like this because they just aren't affected by ruts. They're not quite as good in corners because these are a little more squared off at the edges but you can still take curves pretty fast. The biggest advantage of picking a dual motor scooter over single motor is that dual motor scooters absolutely can Kick butt. Captain, if there's any trouble, I'm gonna kick butt and then stack them 10 high. All right, I'm rolling out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to climbing hills, on our test hill, the P1 2.0 outclimbed all single motor scooters we've tested, except for the Segway GT1, which it exactly tied. But it also outclimbed every dual motor scooter we've tested at this price or lower. The brakes on the P1 2.0 may not be the latest tech, but they get the job done. It comes with cable operated disc brakes plus regenerative braking that charges your battery a little as you slow down. Some people prefer hydraulic brakes because they're self adjusting and are known for having massive stopping power even with just one finger. But check out these one finger stops. I can even get the rear wheel up if I want to. The measured stopping distance was typical for its class at 10.9 feet. On the other hand, it's an absolute monster when it comes to acceleration. At this price point, it beats everything we've ever tested from zero to 30 miles per hour. But to me, what's an even bigger deal is that the sine wave motor controllers make the throttle feel absolutely state of the art. It's smooth, it's not laggy, it's my favorite part of the scooter. And it just made me wanna keep riding and riding. Top speed is up next, but first, if you wanna spec out your own Solar P1 2.0, check out the link in this video's description. It supports this channel, and we've got an ESG exclusive coupon code there that'll save you 5%. I did two top speed runs in opposite directions on flat ground and saw indicated top speeds of 44 miles per hour on the speedometer. But as we know, scooter speedos typically read 10% high, and this scooter is no different. So What's the real top speed? According to our pro-grade tools, the P1 2.0 clocked in at 40.0 miles per hour, exactly matching the manufacturer's claim. By far the highest top speed we've seen at this price point. Keep in mind that all the performance data in this review is based on the optional sine wave controllers, but the base model controllers push the same 25 amps of current per motor. So if you get the sine wave version without the Tron lights, you're looking at a $1,400 scooter that will do a legit 40 miles per hour. And there's a good chance that $1,300 version will do it too. The record setting performance continues with range. The P1 2.0 also went further than any dual motor scooter we've tested at this price. I covered 25.8 miles, riding fairly aggressively on our hilly range test course. The manufacturer's claim is 30 miles, and you could definitely hit that if you keep your speeds under 20 miles per hour and ride on flat ground. We usually only get 50 to 60% of the claimed range on any given scooter, and I covered 86%, so that's pretty close. Nothing this fast is gonna be ultra 
portable, but the P1 2.0 folds down surprisingly small. Honestly, this isn't my favorite style of stem latch, but I found three tricks that make it nicer to live with. First, there's a trick in folding it. You'd think that you'd release the catch on the side first and then pull the main lever, but it's way easier if you release the gold latch first and then the one on the side. The manual actually covers this pretty well. Next, the latch instantly becomes smoother and way easier to use if you spray a little lithium grease in here. And finally, to minimize stem wobble and make the scooter feel its absolute best, just take a 10 millimeter wrench and snug up the tension on the latch right here and you're good to go. Pros of the Solar P1 2.0 include unbeatable speed, acceleration, and range for the price, good ride quality from hydraulic suspension and tubeless tires, smooth throttle because it's the lowest priced dual motor scooter we've tested with sine wave controllers, and it comes with an unusually long two-year warranty from a reputable brand. Cons include stem could be more firm, front suspension is a little too firm for my weight anyway, and the overall style makes the scooter look a little older than it is. While you're doing your research, here are the three closest competitors that we've tested at ESG. The Apollo Ghost is, to my eye, a little nicer to look at. It has a shorter stopping distance from 15 and a better feeling stem but it's more expensive, has very similar acceleration, and doesn't come with tubeless tires. The Manus V2 has smooth sine wave controllers like the P1 2.0, but unlike the P1, comes with hydraulic disc brakes. On the other hand, the Manus is more expensive, doesn't have hydraulic shocks, so it's got good ride quality, but it's just a little more bouncy than the P1 2.0. The Synergy Aviator is an even less expensive dual motor scooter that comes with flat proof tires and weighs almost 10 pounds less than the rest of the comparison scooters. But while its range and 0 to 15 times almost keep up, its top speed is much lower at 27.2 miles per hour and has a less comfortable ride due to the solid tires. With new battery technology coming along, you know, five or 10 years from now, hopefully we'll all be riding 50 pound scooters that can go 50 miles per hour with 50 miles of range and cost the same as a low end laptop. But until then, it's pretty great that we have scooters like this around that cost $1,400, have really great throttle response and will go 40 miles an hour. I'm glad we can finally get these in the US and I'm hoping we'll get to review the FF Lite or another of Solar Scooters really soon. Find out more up at the P1 2.0, scroll down to this video's description. You'll find a link that allows us to do the work needed to make reviews like this one. And we've got an ESG exclusive coupon code there too. You can also support us by remembering to like and subscribe.